literature enthusiasts. Thanks for clicking on this video. My name's Lily. I will be your interpreter for today here at Oakwood's Nature Center. I'm glad you clicked on this video because that means you like dogs. I mean, who doesn't like dogs, right? <laughs> well, today we're going to be talking about two of Michigan's canines, and they're both very similar when you look at their coats or their facial features, but they're also very different. Uh, so, oh, let me introduce you to them. This is the coyote, and then this one is the gray wolf. Ooh, cool, right? But let's focus on the coyote right now. The coyote. What's the first thing that you think of when you look at this coyote? Yeah, it kind of looks like a wolf, am I right? Well, let me show you something. This right here is a coyote skull. It's cute, it's small. Now this, this is a gray wolf skull. It's large and strong. Put them side by side. Yeah, you can see the differences. Coyotes are a lot smaller than wolves. Look at their snout. It's small, as well as their nose pad. But then their ears are fairly large compared to their head size. They need these large ears to listen for small prey because that's what they need to eat. They eat rabbits, they eat squirrels, frogs even, fish. They're very opportunistic species. And when I say opportunistic, I mean they eat almost anything from dead carcasses to, again, small mammals, livestock like cattle and sheep, as well as our pets. They live almost anywhere. They live in agricultural regions. They live in rural regions. They even live in suburban regions. Yes, so you could see them if you're taking a nice hike early in the morning or late in the evening. You see a stray dog far off in the distance. That's most likely a coyote. So they will mostly be by themselves or sometimes even in a pair, in a family, or they might sometimes hunt in a pack. And I wouldn't say this is rare, but you mostly see it in regions where the food availability isn't as large. So for an example, here in the suburbs, there's a lot of different foods they can find, and they're fine with living amongst humans. But if they're up north more, where everything's very remote, they, they thrive off of hunting in a pack. And when I mention a pack, let's turn to the gray wolf. The gray wolf. If I were to put him right next to me, he is a lot taller than I am. They range about four and a half to six and a half feet in length. While the coyote, they range around three and a half to four and a half feet in length. So again, the gray wolf is a lot larger. And if you see a gray wolf, you will know they are fairly large animals. If you look at their snout, compare it to the coyote again, theirs is a lot larger as well as their nose pad, but their ears are smaller than their head size. So they don't go after small prey as much as the coyote does. They go after a lot larger prey. They go after what you call an ungulate or animals that have hooves. So deer, elk, or even moose. And if you've seen a moose, they're fairly large animals, and one wolf will not be able to take it on. So they hunt in a pack. And that's pretty smart. But in this pack, it's different than a coyote. They always operate off of a dominant male, as well as his mate, or what you'd call the alpha male. And I don't want to say always, because there are those special cases where there is not an alpha. But in most cases, there is an alpha. So when you think about these packs, where do you think they're hunting? Where would you find deer, elk, and moose? That's right, you'll find them in the woods or more remote areas. So these packs, they have this communication. They will howl to find each other and to communicate with one another, you know, to locate each other and figure out how they're going to do the hunt. And so these howls are very long and drawn out. Let me give you an example. <clears throat> How -oh! 
probably not as good as mine. Just kidding. Theirs is definitely a lot better than mine. But the coyote, they have a different set of howls. Theirs is more short, uh, not as long and drawn out. They can yip and yap, like yip, 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 yip. Or they'll bark, just like your dog. And they will howl as well, but not, again, as the wolf will. So gray wolves, they need these long and drawn out howls because they are in remote areas. You will never see them in the suburbs because they're not as adaptable as the coyote when it comes to human development. In fact, they stay far away as possible from humans as much as they can because at one point they almost went extinct because of humans. But thankfully, now their population is slowly and steadily increasing. Even though these canines can't be our pets, as cool as they are, let's still treat them with the same respect because this is their home too, where they live, where they sleep, where they hunt. They are just trying to survive. Thank you so much for clicking on this video, and I hope you learned some cool facts about the coyote and the gray wolf, two of Michigan's greatest canines. Thank you again, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Come and visit Oakwoods. There's tons of stuff to see.